it's time now for our opening prayer, the Johnny Appleseed song. So have your big singing voices and follow me as we sing this prayer together. Oh, the Lord's been good to me. And so I thank the Lord for giving me the things I need, like the sun and the rain and the apple seed. The Lord's been good to me. Amen, 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 amen. Now that we know the first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, let's switch over to the Old Testament and learn the first five books of that one. So these are called the books of the law. So let's start from the top. There's the first book, Genesis. Can you say Genesis? Genesis. Then there's the second book, Exodus. Can you say Exodus? Exodus. Then the third book, Leviticus. Leviticus. Can you say that? Leviticus. Then Numbers. We know that one. Numbers. And then the fifth one is Deuteronomy. Can you say that with me? Deuteronomy. Good job. So these five books are the first five books of the Bible, and they make up the books of the law. I want to introduce you now to the book that we're going to be learning more about, the second book of the Old Testament, the book of Exodus. So who wrote this second book in the Bible? Well, it was written by the person we're going to be learning about, the next few weeks, and that person's name is Moses. Why was this book written? Exodus, the book of Exodus, shows how God used his power to rescue or save the Israelites from slavery. So Israelites is a big word, but it just refers to a group of people that are God's people, God's beloved people. So whenever we hear Israelites, think of cheering and clapping, hooray, yay, because they belong to God. They're the good guys. And slavery is something really bad. It's something that where you can't live on your own free will and you have someone that's ruling over you and telling you what to do all the time. You aren't free. No one need, No one should ever be a slave to something like that. God wants us all to be free. So why was this book written? Exodus shows how God used his power to rescue or save the Israelites or God's people from slavery or to be free. What happens in this book? God brings 10 terrible plagues on Egypt. And Egypt is a place that you can still go visit today. It's where the great pyramids are. God forces the Pharaoh or the ruler to let God's people go. God gives the Israelites the Ten Commandments and other laws by which to live. What do we learn about God in this book? God uses his power to rescue or save helpless people. God expects his people to live moral or righteous lives or to be good. Who is important in this book of Exodus? The two most important people are Moses and Aaron. When did this happen? The Israelites left Egypt about 1446 BC. That's about 1,500 years before Jesus was born. The law was given at Sinai a year later, and we're going to learn what that means a little later. Today, let's learn a song about sing and play found from Psalm 33. We're going to sing this. It's a pretty long song. We're going to do the very top line first, then the middle line, then the bottom line. Follow along with me as we sing, sing and play. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Oh, play your best with loud shouts of joy. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. We put our hope in the Lord. We put our hope in the Lord. Our hearts rejoice. 
voice and we trust in God. We put our hope in the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Give thanks to the Lord with a ten-stringed harp. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Good singing voices, everyone. Now we're going to be reading about the story of baby Moses, and I'm going to be reading it from the Rhyming Bible. And so this story is called The Princess and the Baby. It might be a little different wording from your Bible, but that's okay. It's all the same story that God wrote to us. Here is the word of the Lord. A long time ago, there lived a wicked or bad king who tried to do a very, a very wicked or bad thing. The king didn't like the Israelites. Those are God's people. So he made a rule that was very impolite. Throw the baby boys into the Nile River, said the evil king with a wicked smile. A certain mother had a baby boy. He was cute and sweet and he brought her such joy. I can't throw my baby into the Nile, so I'll try my best to hide him for a while. But the baby made noise just like all little boys, so she took a little pinch and she took some weeds and she made a basket boat that would suit her needs. She went to the Nile River and let the basket float while her daughter Miriam watched the little boat. The princess of Egypt came down the path. She was coming to the river to give herself a bath. The princess saw the basket and was so curious as could be. So she said to her servants, bring it here to me. They opened the basket and the boy began to cry when he said, wah, wah. Then she began to sigh. It's an Israelite baby, and he looks so sweet, but I'm sure he's hungry and would like something to eat. Then out came her sister, who was hiding nearby. She said she'd find a nurse so the baby wouldn't cry. The princess agreed, so she ran to find her mother. How glad Miriam was to help her baby brother. He soon went to live with the king's own daughter, and she called him Moses, for she took him from the water. Here ends the reading of God's holy word, and then we all say together, thanks be to God. If you haven't yet, let's open our Bibles and go see exactly where this story of baby Moses is found in God's Bible. So you need to turn to the first pages of your Bible, the table of contents. There you might see two columns like you see from my Bible, the Old Testament on the left and the New Testament on the right. Earlier we learned that the first five books of the Bible are called the books of the law. It's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. So we see that Exodus is um, starts around page 67. So go ahead and flip to chapter 1, the beginning of Exodus in your Bible. It might be a different page number, so be sure to look. All right, we all should be at Exodus chapter 1, big number 1 in our Bible. And my header says, the people of Israel are slaves in Egypt. Yours might say that, or it might say something a little different. Because remember, different translation Bibles have different words, but they mean the same things. So, as you can see, chapter 1, it says, Here are the names of Israel's children who went to Egypt with Jacob. And Jacob is someone that we learned about in a chapter before Exodus. And then it goes over a lot of different people in that family. And it talks about how they ended up in Egypt and then how that family ended up as slaves. 
And then we get to where we started in our story today with the birth of Moses, chapter 2. We know we are at Exodus chapter 2 because we see the big number 2. That's right, the big number 2. Let's read the story again straight from Scripture. This is such a great story. We need to have it put into our brains over and over again. So I want you to follow along with your fingers. If you're not a reader, I want you to still look for the little verses, the little numbers within the words. So the big number two, mine is red, my big red two, that's the chapter. And then after that, we're going to see little numbers. Those are the verses. So here we go. Follow along with me. Moses is born, Exodus chapter 2. A man and a woman from the tribe of Levi got married, verse 2. She became pregnant and had a son by him. She saw that her baby was a fine child, so she hid him for three months, verse 3. After that, she couldn't hide him any longer, so she got a basket that was made out of stems of tall grass. She coated it with tar. Then she placed the child in it. She put the basket in the tall grass that grew along the bank or edge of the Nile River. Moses' sister wasn't very far away. His sister wanted to see what would happen. Verse 5. Pharaoh's daughter went down to the same Nile River to take a bath. Her attendants were walking along the bank of the river. She saw the basket in the tall grass, so she sent her female slave to get it. Verse 6. When she opened it, she saw the baby Moses. He was crying. She felt, she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Verse 7. Then Moses' sister spoke to Pharaoh's daughter. She said, do you want me to go and get one of the Hebrew women? She could nurse the baby for you. Verse 8. Yes, go, she said. So Moses' sister went and got Moses' mom. Verse 9. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this baby. Nurse him for me. I'll pay you. So Moses' mom took the baby Moses back and nursed him. Verse 10. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and Moses became her son. She named him Moses. She said, I pulled him out of the water. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us today, Kids Church. I am so happy to have you here as we learn more about the Bible and God's Word and learn about a very special person from the Bible, Moses. Today we learned about his birth, and next week we're going to learn about him as a teenager as he just grows and grows and grows, just like you. Before we close today's Kids Church, let's say together the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us to say together. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We'll see you next week. God loves you.